At the end of last season, you announced your retirement as a player. Uh, well, I had in the mind what was what was in the plans. I was planning to, to how I was going to go about the next period of my life at Preston, and um, it's it's temporary on hold of playing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, it's a case where it'll, it'll come back. I will play again. So it's not a full retirement, um, but uh, this season um, I won't be playing at all. Um, yeah. It's 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 hard. It's going to be hard, but I'm actually genuinely looking forward and going down and, and taking the kids down and, and watching the cricket and um, yeah, talking sitting down with the lads and talking with the boys and um, mm-hmm. I don't, I've been to a couple of pre-season training sessions this year and I haven't genuinely missed the the, the urge to want to hit balls yet. So um, that will probably come back. <laughs> and in August, of course, you were elected uh, president. Of the club uh, to uh, succeed uh, Gus, who's been an amazing uh, steward in that position over over quite a journey. So you've got big shoes to fill, but uh, everyone says that you're more than capable of uh, fulfilling that. Congratulations. Well, I suppose when you look at me, my captaincy and the the ones taking over from uh, Owen Delaney, who the previous year took made 630 runs, um, that was that was rather daunting as a first eleven captain. Coming from the two to, to captain the ones, um, I, I think right now for me it's it's the perfect time for me to take the reins as, as president, especially with the, the current committee that we've got and how stable it is. Um, it, it's the time, right time for me to take that take that on. Um, and, and Stephen has been just phenomenal for the club um, ever since I got to the club. Um, he, he does everything. Does, there's not many things that, that Gus doesn't do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I feel like there's an avenue where we need to get better is we need to support Gus. We need to support the Penny Wigginsons and the, the Martin Gregory's, um, you know, the Dick Norris's and the Sean Harrison's. We need to, to find new people to support them. Um, and I've been at the club 24 years now. So I think it's the right time now is to, to take that on. Um, mm. So you that's part of the reason why I've been up playing um, is obviously being president and putting time into that, I suppose, and putting time into my own personal game. And you've taken it on at a, at a very challenging time for everybody uh, in the community uh, and in sport with uh, with COVID. Um, yeah. so it presents pr- plenty of challenges for the administration and, and the playing group. Uh, how are you approaching it? Everyone's got challenges. Everyone's got their challenges, not just cricket. Um, it's it's everywhere in life. We've all all got challenges. Um, I face ch- we face challenges at home with homeschool. But what you do is you got to adapt. You've got to learn um, how to to change um, and to find positives in in what's going on. And and COVID's here. But I don't think it's going to be going away um, anytime soon. Hopefully everyone can get vaccinated so we can all start playing a bit of cricket. Um, but I think. The, we had a bit of a taste of it last year. Uh, the committee had a good taste of it. Uh, the structures that we've got in place just continue on from, from last year. Um, Martin done a, a hell of a lot of work. Penny done a hell of a lot of work. Um, and it's just a matter of adapting. Um, the coaches, they, they'll be putting their plans in for um, each individual to do their, their training at home. Uh, the, each, each captain will be having their Zoom chats. So it's yes, there's a lot of negative, but there's there's a lot of positives that, that we face. Um, and the simple thing of being able to have meetings via Zoom, um, as I was saying earlier, this Zoom was never really spoken about prior to COVID. But mm. now you can you can have meetings um, and be completely in different rooms, and it's I think that's one of the positive things from this. Yes. Um, one of the um, early appointments was uh, the reappointment of your coach, Luke Bramage, uh, who's a very impressive uh, young man. Um, and I've been uh, just able to uh, get copied in on, you know, the training regime that he does. He's very organised, uh, very um, highly motivated, um, seems to be a tremendous coach. Yeah, I'm um, very lucky to, to call him one of my best friends. Um, mm. 
He's a very good friend of mine. Um, he's he's not what you'd say that oh, I shouldn't probably. Get, I might go around the right way of saying this, but he's probably not the perfect cricket coach. But he's a he's a really good life coach and giving you good lessons how to really train the mind. Um, and as you know, cricket is majority of it's in the head. Mm-hmm. If you're confident within yourself, um, you will perform. And that's Luke gives that element of confidence. Let the players um, make mistakes. Let the players um, set their own training regime at training. Um, but in the same time, he also has expectations on the players. So uh, to, for me, I'm, I'm really excited about working with Luke. Um, but we've had, we've had some, this year has been probably the best year for uh, new faces and new people coming to the club since I've been at the club. Yep. So, Tell us a few things. You've got a new captain. Yes, Michael Stretton. Um, he's come across from Greenvale, captain there, first 11. Um, we, Gus, spoke with Michael when he came from New South Wales because he played New South Wales grade cricket uh, two seasons ago. Um, had a good chat with him. He elected to, he, he had more aspiration of playing Premier Cricket and high level cricket in Melbourne, or the, uh, obviously Greenvale. We've kept in touch with him over the journey. Um, he's just a very, very good person, very good player, um, and a very, um, he's going to be a very good leader for us. Um, and I, he's the, the element for our first 11 that we, we, we've lacked, um, mm. is, is finding that the right character who's got the, the story behind him, um, where you've got that premium name. Um, so he's, he's fantastic, um, to have on board. Um, also, obviously, um, getting back Alex Lewis, getting him back as director of cricket mm-hmm. uh, is, is a massive, massive plus for myself. Where the cricket department, as we, as you know, what Alex is like, he's, he's ruthless, he's thorough, um, and he's got passion. He's got mm-hmm. so much passion for the club, um, and, and that's one of the things that um, I'm striving for. And I, one of the early lessons I got was in recruiting. One of the person said to me. Character over cover drives. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you find the right character, and then your club will build from there. Um, I suppose the other the other recruit we've got is is Dean Wilkes, um, who's a who's a, been at Preston Baseballers for he's a life member at the Preston Baseballers. So but we've got him on board to captain our fourth eleven. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a massive season where we've, we've got really good people in the club um, and I can see Dean is going to be it's a piece of the puzzle that really fits everything together with the club you always you start from the bottom and, and you work your way right up to the top um, and that, that was the experience that I had was having a really good fourth level captain who gave me really good lessons cared about me um, and gave me a really good education mm. so yeah, it's a, I'm really excited about about what we've got um, as a club at the moment. So, yeah. Who are who are the one to two younger players you're expecting to you know, make an impact? Without putting too much pressure on them, but uh, it's a great it's a great question. Um, who are the really good young players? Well, I think obviously we know um, Daniel Gregory's for hell of a lot of potential to to go. To the next level as a first level player, um, I, I think for me there's a there's a kid called Harry Downs, um, playing in the threes, playing in the twos. Um, he, his work ethic is is as good as any player at the club, um, and I see him having a massive impact this season. Um, there's probably one more is a young kid called Will Green. I think he's got a lot of um, serious potential. He's he's only 16, but I think he's about 197 centimetres. So he's uh, I don't know what that is. About six foot five, and he's an opening bowler, um, playing in the threes. And I can see um, him coming forward. Probably Lachlan Bamford's another one who I can see really going places this season. Um, I probably would have I probably could have forgotten um, Lachlan Kirkroy. He's going to get an opportunity to play uh, to keep in the ones. This season, 
Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing him him step up. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of really good talent um, floating around the club at the moment. Yes, yeah. seems that way. Um, uh, Daniel Gregory made a big score in the final, didn't he? Uh, or... Yeah, he got himself a, a I think it was a thirty in, in tough conditions mm. um, at, at Plum Valley, and um, he, that was a top score for yeah. us in the in that game. And um, I think if he had got out early. Might have been a different set of circumstances, but he's he's a genuine leader. Um, yeah. He's a future leader of the club, and I'm looking forward to watching his growth. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we've lost a, a couple of players. Uh, TJ, who had a fantastic season, has had to go back because of visa and family sort of issues. But uh, so he'll be a miss. Is, yep. is there, uh, are there any other losses? Uh, Sajit. So we've lost Sajit. He's um. He's got personal um, reasons for not playing. Um, so we've lost him, lost TJ. We've lost about three players to Fitzroy Doncaster, mm-hmm. um, which is a credit to the club, which is a positive. Um, having players going and playing premiums uh, yeah. on our priority list. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've lost those two. We've picked up a, a left arm off spinner, um, Charith Sudaraka. His name is so he's a, a lot. He's a Sri Lankan born, um, but he's played a little bit of first class over there, and he's um, over here. He's been over the last three years playing a local comp, so he's, um, he's come on board. Um, so yeah, what we've lost, I think we've definitely um, replaced quite comfortably. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, well, that's, that's really, really good to hear. Uh, so all we want is uh, restrictions or lockdown to sort of open up to enable some, uh, some proper training and, uh, and then leading to some games. Um, it's all up we're in the all, air. We're, all, we're, we're all hoping for those restrictions to lift. Um, yeah, it's definitely... Um, I'm, yeah. I'm really keen to and looking forward to getting out there and watching the boys play and um, seeing what we can do as a club. But yeah, so... Definitely want these restrictions to ease, um, <laughs> not just for cricket, but for, for homeschooling and for people's lives to get back to a little bit of normal normal uh, way of uh, going about their lives. So, mm. yeah. On that note, uh, Michael, it's been a fantastic uh, conversation that we've had. Um, I know the 1860 members are very impressed that... Uh, with your career and of course uh, the responsibilities that you've taken on and we will be 100% behind you moving forward uh, in your capacity as president. So all the best of luck and we wish yeah. you well. well. Thanks Lee. It's, um, for me personally, it's, I've, um, I've taken on the job um, wanting to, to bring everyone on this journey together. Um, it's 1860, it's the academy, it's um, bringing the, the community together and, and really celebrating what you and I both know has, has been a great club and massive parts of our lives. Um, and for me, it's a very exciting time. So I, I thank you very much and um, yeah, look forward to seeing you again at Preston City Open.